Um, significant figures. Now, have, have you heard that term before? Significant figures or significant digits or sig figs, I call them, okay? Um, significant figures just are, are telling us basically how precise our measurement is. Okay, that's essentially what it is. So in a measurement, not all of our digits are considered significant, okay? Do you have any idea what is the one digit that we make the rules about? What's the one digit that is, is tougher? What? Zero. Zero. Zeros are what all the rules are about, okay? Because if there is a digit in a measurement that's not a zero, usually we put some thought into that digit, right? We wouldn't have just put down another extra digit for no reason, right? So the zeros are where digits get a little bit... Uh, our measurements get a little bit fuzzy. And so the whole point of significant figures is to allow us to make scientific calculations um, in the, at the correct level of precision. So let me say that again, okay? If I'm taking measurements, let's say I take a whole bunch of measurements, okay? 14.4, uh, 15.2, 13.3, 14.1, whatever. And let's say I needed to calculate the average. As a part of my experiment, I needed to calculate the average. So let's say I calculate the average of those. I don't know where it's going to be. I guess I could just do it because it'll take five seconds, okay? 14.4 plus 15.2 plus 13.3 plus 14.1 plus 15.2 plus 13.3 plus 14.1 divided by 4. My average comes out to be 14.25. Now here's the problem. I cannot report that number as my average because it is more precise than my original measurements. Do you see the difference? I only measured my original values to the tenths place. So there's, it's not fair for me to give, a, give a, an, an average or a final calculation that is more exact than one of my measurements. That just isn't, that's not how it works. You can't just do the math and then end up with a number that's more exact than our original measurements. So our significant figures rules will tell us we have to round that to be 14.3. Okay, sorry, what was that what your question was? Yeah, like why? It's like, is it more specific? like those just don't have anything called like that would be a zero well not necessarily because when i read when i take the instrument if i sorry if i take a measurement if i gave this measurement i knew it was between 14 and 15 but i estimated this point four. and so i'll teach you that measurement rules here in a little bit but usually when you t you take measurements you read what the instrument gives you and you estimate an extra digit so even on all of these that 10th place has been estimated Right? I knew it was between 14 and 15, but I guessed on point four. And so by giving a, a measurement like this, that's, that's like basically saying, just, it's basically saying that my measurements were more exact than they actually were. So that's no good. All right, go ahead. Any digit that is not a zero is considered significant. Okay, so any non-zero digit. All right. But if I was going to ask you how many significant figures are in this measurement, what would you tell me? Three, right? There are three digits in that measurement. All of them are significant because none of them are zeros, right? Very simple, uh-huh. What if it was like 100? Would, would that be? Yeah, because like... Yeah, the, we're going to get to that. We don't know, okay? But I'll tell you why in a second. We don't know how many significant figures this has because we don't know, was this number rounded? Was it exactly 100.00? We have no clue. So I'll show you what we do with that rule in a second, okay? But... These digits are all non-zeros, so they are all significant. The next rule, zeros to the right of digits after the decimal point are significant. Zeros to the right of digits after the decimal point. So let me show you what that looks like. 13.30. Okay, now I have one, two, three, four significant figures. Okay, when we take a measurement... The last digit of our measurement is always an estimated digit, okay? It means we know it was greater than 13.3 but less than 13.4, and we think that measurement must have fallen exactly on the zero because we, our estimated digit is a zero. The reason this digit is significant is because it comes after the decimal place. It comes at the end, which means we put thought into it and we estimated that digit, okay? So that has four significant figures. What about this measurement right here, 3.3? Zero, zero, zero. How many sig figs? Two. Do we all think two? I think four. All of those zeros are to the right of digits after the decimal point. Okay? So this one would have four as well. How many would this one have? 
2.0 inches. Two, right? There's my sig figs right there. Okay, both of those are significant. I estimated that zero, so it is significant. Zeros between digits are significant. That just now becomes a zero that's part of the number. So that looks like this. 104.0 centimeters. How many sig figs do I have? Four. One, two, three. And why is that one significant? To the right of the decimal, to the right of the decimal place after digits. After digits. Okay. Does it seem easy so far? Doing okay? So like, even when, so like, that's 104, but like, why would we write it out 104.0? Well, okay, so when I take the measurement, that I have to, I always have to give the measurement with as much precision as my measurement device allows me. So when we take a measurement with a meter stick, and I'll teach this here in a, in a week or so, um, we take a measurement with a meter stick. This means that I knew my measurement was greater than 104, but less than 105. So my measurement must have landed exactly on 104 right there. And so I add the zero to show that it wasn't between 103. 100 and 110, and I estimated the four, right? I knew it was 104 plus something else. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So whatever your last digit is, that's an estimated digit. Okay. okay. Zeros to the left of digits before they start are non-significant. Zeros to the left of digits before they start are non-significant. They are considered placeholders for the decimal point. Okay, and I'll explain why that is here in just a second. But if I look at this example I put on, that means these two digits are non-significant because they are both to the left of digits, regardless of before or after the decimal point. Okay? These zeros are both non-significant, and here's why. Let's say that this was measured in meters, 0 0.0860 meters. Shouldn't I have just measured in centimeters instead? right? If we're thinking in the metric system, I could have just used a different unit to take that measurement. That would have made more sense, right? So rather than have numbers that are really teeny tiny and have a bunch of zeros before, I should have measured with a different tool, okay? But those zeros are non-significant. So tell me, in this example that I have listed here, how many significant figures do we have? Three, one, two, and three, right? This zero is to the right of digits after our decimal point. These two are just placeholders. Why isn't the zero before the, before the decimal count as a significant It's not significant. It's just showing us how small the number is. It doesn't have anything to do with the measurement itself. Okay. Right? It just has to do with how small our actual number is. Okay? So those two are non-significant. All right. Last one here. All visible digits in scientific notation are significant. And I think I changed the wording after I printed yours out. But all visible digits in scientific notation... And so what I mean by that is I don't care about the number after it's expanded, okay? 1.63 times 10 to the fourth. I don't care what it looks like when it becomes uh, 16,300. I don't care about that. What I care about is the numbers that I can see in scientific notation. One, two, three, sig figs. That's it, Okay. When we use scientific notation, it allows us to put a, a kind of a, a lot of variation in our numbers of significant figures. So scientific notation allows us a lot of flexibility because if I'm trying to express the number 16,300, I could put 1.6 times 10 to the fourth or 1.63 times 10 to the fourth or 1.630 times 10 to the fourth, right? I can express that with a lot of different degrees of exactness. But it, it's any visible digit. So this one only has two sig figs. This one has three. This one has four. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, you can put them in as many as you want as long as we have the, the um, capacity for them. We call uh, ambiguous. Ambiguous means we don't know how many significant figures there are. And this is the example of 100 that we talked about earlier. Um, I'm going to give... I'm actually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to backtrack a little bit on your slides here. So... I'm going to go uh, a little bit off of what you have. So on your slides, you might want to just write this stuff separately, okay? Numbers are ambiguous if they have what I call trailing zeros. So if they have trailing zeros with no decimal place. 
okay? So if a number has what I call trailing zeros with no decimal point, that would be what we consider ambiguous, okay? And so examples would be 10, 800, 60,000, right? Do you see how all of those have zeros at the end, but no decimal point? Are we seeing that? Yes or no? Okay. Um, these trailing zeros are, are a problem for us because we have no clue. Was this number, was it 10.00 and we got lazy and didn't write it down right? Or was it 9.7 that got rounded up? Right? We have no idea if we just present the number 10. So when we have numbers like this, we, we can't even take a guess as to how many significant figures there are. If I asked you to identify how many significant figures are in a number like this, you would just write, it's ambiguous. You wouldn't even have to take a guess, okay? So this, another problem is that we should never give ambiguous numbers as part of our answer. <laughs> we have to give our numbers in the correct number of significant figures. Let's say that we've got a number that's ambiguous and we need to put it in a, in a certain number of significant figures. You can fix ambiguous numbers. with either scientific notation or adding a decimal place. Okay, those are our two options for how we can make it an ambiguous number not ambiguous anymore, right? So let's say I needed to give the number 800 but I'm only allowed to have two significant figures. How would I do that? If I need to represent the number 800, but my, I'm only allowed to have my answer in two sig figs, how would I do it? Okay, very close. Not just eight times 10 to the second, but what would it be? 8.0 times 10 to the second. Very good, right? Because there's my two sig figs and I still am representing the number 800. Very good, okay? Tell me what questions do we have with identifying our numbers of significant figures? Now we're gonna move into how we do math with them. Okay, I'm gonna skip past that one, okay. Math operations, we've got two main sets of rules for when we perform math operations. The first set of rules is for adding and subtracting. Adding and subtracting, okay? This is really important, so highlight this, circle it, star it, whatever you need to do with, with this information, but I need you to know it, okay? When we add and subtract numbers, <clears throat> excuse me, we do the math, then we round our answer to the fewest number of decimal places involved. We round our answer to the fewest number of decimal places involved. That's another way for us to say we cannot have an answer that is more precise or more exact than one of our original measurements. Okay? So do I, I think I have an example on your slide maybe? Okay, let me get to that here. Okay, so here is an example I gave, okay? And I, I went ahead and did the math for us. But we've got a number 12.520 plus 14.0 gives us this raw answer. So let's examine our original measurements. When we do adding and subtracting, we are focused on decimal places, not on significant figures total, decimal places. Do you know what I mean when I say decimal places? What do I mean? That's right, the number of digits that come after the decimal place. So when I'm adding this first number, how many decimal places do I have? I have three. My second number only has one decimal place. So how many decimal places am I going to be allowed in my answer? One. Only one, right? I'm rounding my answer to the fewest number of decimal places involved, which has only one. So I'm gonna round my answer to one decimal place. Does this two cause my five to stay a five or go up to a six? Stay a five. Stay a five. So my final answer here would be 26.5. All right, my answer cannot be more exact or more precise than one of my original first measurements. Okay? Let's look at the rules for multiplication and division, and then um, I'll have some practice for us. Okay, when we multiply and divide, we do the... I'm sorry, go ahead. 32.13 is what I had in my calculator. Would we agree? Okay, 
So can, do you have any ideas about where we're going to have to round our answer? Okay, so this one, this first measurement has how many decimal places? How about our last one? Two. But what about this middle one? It's a whole number. No, no, it's a whole number. So we have to round our answer to a whole number. 32. If it was like 39.45 right. and plus uh, 45.91, you would run it to like a two-three decimal? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so since my fewest number of decimal places here was zero, because one of them was a whole number, we don't, we don't try to add on things to our measurements that aren't there, right? If it's a whole number, there's a reason it's a whole number. It's not a very precise measurement, so our answer doesn't get to be very precise either. So no matter how many decimal places everything else has, if there's a whole number in the equation, the answer is That's right. We round it to the fewest number that we see. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter if we round before. Do the math first, then round. Yep. Do the math first, then round. Because something here could have caused that to round it up to 33. But if I would have dropped them first, right, it could mess with things. So I would say do the math first, then do your rounding. All right, let's look at the rules for multiplying and dividing. We do the math, then we round our answer to the fewest number of sig figs involved. So now we're concerned with significant figures, not with decimal places. Fewest number of sig figs involved. So here's an, uh, an example I gave here. 2.40 times 12, and the raw answer comes out to be 28.8. I want us to examine here what, how many significant figures are in each of those original numbers. How many sig figs does this one have? It has three. The next one has two. So how many, how many sig figs can I have in my answer? Only two. So can I just go to 28? No. What does it need to be? 29. 29. And also an acceptable answer would also be 2.9 times 10 to the first, but like there's no need for me to put it into scientific notation there, right? I can, I can represent my number in the correct number of significant figures without going to scientific notation. So I think that's a good option. Okay. I want to try, um, try these two on your own and then we'll call it a day. I'm only going to write up the raw answer for right now, and then we'll kind of see where we're supposed to be after that. I'm just going to write up what I got when I just did the math. So these aren't correct answers yet. <coughs> Bless you. Okay, does anyone have final answers yet they want to share? Yeah, Tim. Um, actually, 319.7. Well, that's the raw answer, but what's it supposed to be after I, after I consider my significant figures? 320. Yeah. 320. Does anyone see a problem with that? Mm. Oh, it doesn't have a decimal. It's ambiguous. It's ambiguous, right? That's a trailing zero without a decimal. That's ambiguous, right? And we said we can't present ambiguous answers. So what's the way for me to fix an ambiguous number? Okay, so if I add a decimal, that puts me back to four sig figs, which is what I had here. I got to go to scientific notation. Have to go to scientific notation. So I'm not going to be at 320. I'm going to be at 3 point, oops, sorry, 3.2 times 10 to the what? 3.2 times 10 to the second. Why can't I do this? 3.19 times 10 to the second. Why can't I do that? No. I got too many sig figs there. I'm only allowed to have two. So that's why I can't do that. I also can't do 3.1 times 10 to the second because that's not rounding correctly. So the correct answer has to be 3.2 times 10 to the second. Did anybody get there on their own? Yeah, good. Okay. You will. Okay. What about the second one? 26.3. I would agree, right? We're only allowed one decimal place because of that guy right there and that guy. 
right? So we've got to round our answer to have one decimal place. This one, putting it in scientific notation, would be worse off for us, right? I have to go 2.6 times 10 to the first, and I would lose a, a level of exactness there. So that's no good.